G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Well, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu 2004 on my main system. So let's get started on that. Bit of sound there for the startup screen and let's continue. English US, download updates, install third party. I had to have started this, but uh, I thought I'll stop the uh, install and in install simple screen recorder and record the whole thing. I normally do that so I, I have a date on when I did install something to my main system. So actually um, I need to quit again because uh, what I need to do is um, I need to open Gpart which I've installed. Forgot all about that and that's my one terabyte. I do not want to touch that. That's where all my good stuff is. It's all backed up anyway but you know you don't want to be messing around with all that stuff. So I've got uh, unallocated space there, which I always keep on the SSD. It's an NVMe drive. So what I'm going to do is um, I've currently got Ferran OS on here. Well, I did have. Uh, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to delete that and create complete unallocated space. Um, now, I might dual boot this with something. I'm going to maybe set it up to do it that way. Um, let's just make sure that uh, the partition, the device, um, let's have a look at the uh, view device information. Partition table is a GPT, so that's okay. Don't need to worry about that. So let's go new. I'm going to uh, set up a 512 megabyte boot partition, make it FAT32, add that, and then new again. Now I want to go roughly half of that, so I'll make it make it 110, so I'll make it 112.640, so 112.640, and add that, and that makes a 110 gigabyte drive, and then we make another new one, 512 megabytes, FAT32, so I can dual boot if I want to, and this one here, I need to leave a couple of gigs, so I'm going to make that a new one, make it 119.808, leaves me free space of 5 gig, XT4, enter. So actually I'm going to make that, I've changed my mind, so I'm going to make that 122.880, XT4, add that, there's 120 gig and I've got 1.88 gigabytes of unallocated space that's exactly what I wanted so that's all good 10 gigabyte difference I like to have a difference in my disk so I can tell the difference between them and the FAT32 will manage flags and set as boot ESP and the same with this one while we're here I'm not installing anything to that at the moment anyway and that's all done so what I can do now is start the installation Bit of a greeting sound there. Don't know if you heard that or not. English US for me. Um, and you can choose any other keyboard that you wish. It's keyboard layout. For me it's English US. Uh, it's got a detect keyboard layout here. And we can test our keyboard if we wish. Exclamation 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, uh, 4, 5, 6. That all seems to be working all right. Uh, try these things here. Question mark, forward slash, backslash, pipe. Yep, that all seems to be working well. Dot and arrow, back arrow, comma. Yep, all right, so that seems to be working well. Let's continue. Normal installation, download updates, and install third party for your graphics, Wi-Fi, and media formats and things like that. Probably doesn't have some codecs in there, we need to do that post install. So let's continue. I'm going to do something else. You can do a simple erase disk, but I've just, as you've seen just previous, I carved my disk up into two boot partitions and two installation partitions, so I need to do something else. So what we're gonna do here is, um, let's have a look. Okay, so the only problem with these NVMEs is they are so hard to tell the difference with the numbers. One's got a zero and one's got a one. So that's your main one. That's where the only way I can tell very quickly is the size of the disk. But boy, SDA 
one and SDA two is so much easier than all these NVMe nonsense here. <laughs> it's sometimes very hard to tell. So there's my free space. Oh, there is a bit of free space there. Don't know why I didn't put it there. Maybe it did that purposely itself automatically. So I'm looking at my second disc, which is the NVMe one N one, and then you've got N one. 1 and 1 partition 1 2 3 4 this one's got one partition so i'm going to install ubuntu on nvme 1 n1 partition 2 which is the 118 gig it was meant to be 110 i don't know why it reports different sizes of uh, partitions a bit strange make it ext4 no need to format, I've already done that. Mount point is root. And we are going to use the boot partition, which is next to this one, is EFI partition there. So that will be our um, boot device for bootloader is NVM, NVMe1 N1 P1. NVMe1 N1P1. My goodness. <laughs> Lucky I'm wearing my good glasses today. 1 N1P1. Yep. So if we just focus on the numbers after the NVMe, makes it a bit easier. 1 N1P1. 1 N1P1. Okay. Let's make sure of that. And I'm going to install now. Um, okay, so the file system on dev NVMe 1 N1 partition 2 signed to root has not been marked for formatting. Now let's go back. All right, so it's asking me to format. So let's do that. Double click that. Let's format that. Okay. All right, it's just a bit of a warning there, but let's just do it without the warning as best. And I've got a tick there so I can see which one I'm installing to. So I just double clicked that anyway. That's what I did. So NVMe 1N1P1, we'll just double check that again, make sure nothing's changed and install now. That gives you a warning that this will destroy all data on any partitions you have removed. Yep, let's continue. Australia Perth for me, you can select your location. For me it's Australia Perth. So I always put the name of the operating system, Ubuntu, and the debt and the machine that it's on. It's on my NUC, so Ubuntu NUC. Just in case I put Ubuntu on something else, I can recognize the different Ubuntu's. I don't normally install the same the same distro on different computers. I normally like to use different distros, so I've got a bit of variety. Variety is a spice of life, they say.
And that's the install complete. That did not take too long at all. So um, I will continue testing and save my video and then we'll be in the desktop. Not sure if it's today or tomorrow, but uh, we'll definitely be checking out the post install. So here we are in the desktop of Ubuntu 20.04. Um, we can connect online accounts, which is the uh, little welcome screen here. No initial setup. We've seen that in the beta version. Let's just skip that one. Um, set up live patch, which means you update your kernel without rebooting. I'm happy to reboot with a kernel update and no drama there. Yes, I'll send my information to Canonical. I won't turn on location services right now. And you're ready to go. We can install some software like so. And there's a little button there. So there's a lot more than what there was in the beta, I think, there. So what have we got? Visual Studio, Android Studio, OBS, GIMP, Git Kraken, Bomb Squad, Slack, Spotify, Zenotic, Mail, Spring, Opera, Telegram. So quite a few things there. We can open software. We won't do that now. We'll click Done. We've got some updates pending here. So let's check out the details of the updates. Ubuntu Base, 99 kilobytes. Let's install that and see the progress bar here, which is what it used to be like on the Unity desktop, that little progress bar. Installing, updating snaps. Oh, the software on this computer is up to date. Now, one thing I'm really keen to look at, and this is on my main system, by the way, so um, this will probably be my main driver for a while. So I need to tweak the desktop and uh, probably do another video for that. So I just want to get it set up first. Just all the initial updates and stuff out of the way. Okay. Because when I went through the software store, and apparently it's a bit slow at the moment because um, there's a lot more users than expected. So I suppose that's a good thing for Ubuntu and Canonical. Probably um, a bad thing if it shines a, a bad light on, on the, uh, a slow software center, but um, I'm sure they'll work that out pretty quickly. Uh, got me favorite there in the list. So let's check out this menu. Sign in about Ubuntu software. What do we got here? Ubuntu software installed updates. We are software is up to date. So I'm not really sure where we would um, find the normal repositories unless it's there already. Let's just check it out. So we'll go to one of these categories here. Uh, music and audio is always a good one. Okay, there we go. I just uh, clicked back and clicked back into it again. Must have uh, refreshed it or something. So let's just have a quick look around at some of these, some of this software here. That's from Snap. So you've got to drop down here. Snap. See, oh, you can latest stable. Latest edge, latest beta, latest stable. So these are definitely all snaps. So where is, where can we, um, within this software, where can we flick over to the the normal Ubuntu repositories? I don't know. Is it in the categories? Social entertainment. Hmm. Cherry tree. And that's a snap. So I'm looking for Blender. Blender. So we've got three there. Snap. Snap. So I'm thinking that there's some, maybe there's some software here that can possibly be flicked over to normal repositories, but not all of them maybe, I don't know. Okay, so the software center is a little bit slow at the moment, it's not even opening some things up, so may have to wait till that gets sped up a bit. 
So we'll have a quick look through here and see what's here. Firefox's normal LibreOffice. And the first thing we can do is probably put the office together. And it's marked it appropriately as office. I don't think the beta did that, so everything's working as expected now, I suppose you could say. Utilities, backups, disk usage analyzer, document viewer, calculator, um, to do, Thunderbird mail, videos, additional drivers in the menu as well. Shotwell, Rhythm Box, Transmission. All right, Startup Disk Creator and Startup Applications. Okay. Backgrounds, just a few there, so not too many, but we can add our own pictures, no problem. So not a lot to see here at the moment. We've got Settings. Wi-Fi, network, Bluetooth, I've got my headphones connected, background, appearance, notifications, so you've got notifications on for most things there, search, they're all included in the search, applications, so you can adjust notifications and handlers for individual applications, privacy, Location services, Thunderbolt, file history and trash. So you can you've got some options for trash there as well. Screen lock, settings are there, and diagnostics. Online accounts you can add from here now after original setup or original startup. Sharing, sound, settings here, alert sounds. Power settings, screen display, and you've got single display, mirror your displays, join displays. You can swap your monitors around if you need to. Two separate monitors there. One's a Samsung, the other one's an Asus. Mouse and touchpad. Not a lot of settings there. Probably the basics of what you need. Keyboard shortcuts, which I'll be going through to see what is handy and what's not. Printers, removable media, color, language and region, universal access, users, CB. <laughs> That's what people normally call me sometimes, CB. And um, default applications, date and time, and about. So there's my specs. Click on software updates from here. Oh yeah, you can make changes there, that's handy. Windows is X11, GNOME version 3.36.1. So they got the extra extra version of GNOME in there as well. OS type is 64-bit, Ubuntu 20.04. Disk capacity, 1.3 terabytes. Graphics card, which is on board, processor, and my memory device name I can change from here if I want. So that was the post install and a quick look around Ubuntu 20.04 and hopefully once I get around to a video on tweaking my desktop and I'll take you through that. So I won't tweak anything until I'm ready to make the video and uh, and I'll take you through what I'm going to do and I'm going to have a look at what uh, extensions are available and what are the best ones. We were discussing that today but I was a little bit zoned out doing something, so I might have to sort of watch back Big Daddy Linux Live and find out what they were talking about and see if we can uh, find some extensions that are very handy. I've already got a few written down, so we'll see how we go with that. Um, we have one button here is the help button, and there's plenty of help there if you need it. No problem at all. So that's another thing we're going to have to uh, do in the tweaks is when you click on this, um, you click on it and maximizes, but when you click it again, it doesn't minimize, which I don't mind that doing that. So, or if I put in a, a dash to panel, it may already do that. So that's another option. So that was my post install and quick look around of Ubuntu 20.04. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.